In one of my previous tutorials, we had seen how we can use the cross product of two vectors to calculate the area of a parallelogram like the one we see here. That is, a parallelogram formed by two vectors a and b. And we had seen that the area was given by the formula area equals to the magnitude of the cross product of a and b. And so in this video, we're going to see why this is the formula. And to fully appreciate why this is the formula, let me quickly remind you of the formula we had seen for calculating the magnitude of a cross product. Remember, we had seen that the magnitude of a cross product of a and b is given by the magnitude of the vector a times the magnitude of the vector b times the sine of the angle between the two vectors a and b. Okay, so as such, these are all the things we had already seen. And so now let's show why the area of this parallelogram is equal to the magnitude of this cross product. Well, to get started, I'll copy the parallelogram. So something looking like this. There we go. And I'll label the sides here with their lengths. So the length of the blue side here would be equal to the magnitude of vector a. And so I'll write that. That's the magnitude of vector a. And the length of the purple side, well, that would be equal to the magnitude of vector b. I'll also add to this and say that the interior angle between the two vectors a and b is called theta, like so. And now we're all set. Remember that the area of a parallelogram, so I'll just write that area of parallelogram, parallelogram, there we go, equals to its base times its height. There we go. Looking at the parallelogram we have here, if we say that the blue side length is its base, then its length is equal to the magnitude of vector a. And so I could quickly write that the base is the magnitude of vector a. But what about the height? Well, the height of this parallelogram is equal to the length of the perpendicular projection of this vertex onto the base. And if I draw that, you'll see that right away, that's the length of this green line segment here, which is perpendicular to the base. And I'll go ahead and call that h. So the area equals to the magnitude of a times h. And so we quickly see here that what we really need to find here is the value of the height h. And since h is perpendicular to the base, we can use our knowledge of right angle trigonometry here. Indeed, if I consider the right angle triangle I'm hovering over right now, in fact, I'll make a copy of it. That's the right angle triangle right here. So I've got the hypotenuse and there we go. That's the right angle here. Relative to the interior angle theta, the height h is the opposite side length. And the hypotenuse, well, that's the magnitude of vector b. Looking at this right angle triangle, we quickly see that we can use sine of theta and state that it's equal to its opposite side length, so that's h in this case, over the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of vector b. And rearranging this, we quickly see that the height h is equal to the magnitude of b times sine of theta. There we go. Finally, combining this result with the fact that the area equals to the magnitude of a times h, we can state that the area of the parallelogram is equal to the magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b times sine of theta. And looking back at the formula that I reminded us of earlier on, we quickly see that's equal to the magnitude of the cross product of a and b. So I could write that underneath and state that the area is equal to the magnitude of the cross product of the vectors a and b. And there we go.